If you just started to study topology, then this video is for you. In this video, I cover the concept of a topological space and what does it mean that two topological spaces are homeomorphic and how we use invariants to do this. This is going to be part one, where we're going to consider just a couple of simple examples and two type of invariant, which are, are going to be dimension and compactness. And you can see the way how I usually present map during my private tutoring sessions. And there are going to be like more, they're going to be like part two, three and four and etc. And also I will cover uh, some differential equations in the later videos. Otherwise, thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions. So let's start. We have X to be a topological space, yes. And what do we have for topological spaces? If, if you're given like two topological spaces, X and Y, I will indicate this as TS. They are topological spaces. What do you want for them? You want to construct the map, which is homomorphisms. And what is homeomorphism is bijective and it's continuous and inverse is continuous. Idea is more or less for all of the things that we're doing. If you given, if two spaces are homeomorphic to each other, we indicate this by this notation. Using the intuition speaking that you can go from one space to another space by bending, stretching, but you don't allow to wrap it and do any like discontinuous transformations. The question is like, if I'm going to give you two spaces, how to determine like this, how to determine if these two spaces are homeomorphic or not? So one of the way what you can do, you can to show is homeomorphic you can like show the existence of homeomorphism. But the second thing you can use invariance to show that they are, are not homeomorphic. So what is an invariance stay constant under homeomorphism? So in other words, it's some sort of object which you can assign. So what do you have? Let's draw a picture. You have like topological space. This is X. And on top of this, you will assign some algebraic object invariant. This is invariant. And you can compute it. You can get some definite answer. You can get a polynomial, a number, or whatever. And then what you can do, you can go and you, it's like in the collex of T, you can consider like the family you can kind of change, transform your space. And when you transform your space, you will transform and getting some kind of different invariant. No, like you will get, uh, you also can compute an invariant for the transform space. And if this, like the values which your computer is the same, topological spaces might be not homeomorphic, but you're not sure. But if you will show that invariant are not the same, that means that Two spaces are not homeomorphic for sure. Okay, so then uh, example, like simple example. You have X be, let's say, a plane, and you have Y be uh, a circle, S1. So this is R2, and this is S1. Is uh, S1 homeomorphic to R2? And let's right now discuss different ways showing and proving this. So the first thing before we're going to use the actual map, you, like informal proof, how would you argue? And for Z, let's take, uh, and the object that I'm defining is actually all the objects we're going to use to entire this subject. Uh, it's disk D2. Okay, so uh, the first one, what we answered is X, homeomorphic to y you said no what about second one if x homeomorphic to z, z? and this no your solution was uh dimension dimension argument okay we, we're gonna give more arguments but uh let's discuss the second one so what about so right now like your dimension argument doesn't work because in this case, what do we have? We have a disk and the a plane. So and disk has dimension two. Then 
I will repeat my question: Is x homeomorphic to z? So let's think, uh, let's try to see and look at some topological properties and some arguments. If you have topological space x, what properties do we like about this topological sp space? What we can study about it? If you have a subset of R n which is open and closed, then what can you say about that subset? You have like function f from a b to r, yes. If I'm going to give you any inter closed interval a b, any function f from this closed interval to r, do global mean and global max are attained for this function on this interval? A uh, function of on the closed interval has a global mean max, yes. Because intuitionally speaking, it means like if you have a b and you start driving your function, continuous function, then you need like to reach all the points. So you always have mean and max. And as one like counterexample, can you give me the function which define, let's say, in zero one? Oh, let's do another one. Let's do like this one. So it's easy for you. Uh, zero one to r which, for example, doesn't have global mean and max on your domain. But let's look at 1 over x, for example, yes. The graph of 1 over x is going to look like this. What is local uh, global minimum? And what is global maximum? x belongs to Rn, and uh, x is compact. This is going to be the same if and only if x is closed and bounded. That's why when you work in Rn, let's work in R2. Let's take uh, this closed core, this set. Is this compact? It's uh, the set which is given xy with x bigger or equal than 0 and y bigger or equal than 0. But here I'll now let's reduce this result. So what do you need to check to check that set is compact? It's not bounded. OK, so perfect. So this is not compact. OK, so let's fix this by considering instead that, that set. Let's take um, this triangle. But I'm going to remove this point. Is this compact? It's not close. Perfect. OK, but what about if I will take this, or, uh, this uh, right now uh, triangle? Is this compact? Yeah. Does it make sense? So like we have this really important notion of compactness. And compactness are good because whenever you have a continuous function from x to y, you have that the image of then if x is compact, then f of x, I think, is, is compact, uh, f continuous. So that's why like we like compactness. So that's why we come back to my original question when I asked when we have some topological space what do we like to study what properties do we discuss so one of the properties is compactness we review compactness from for one dimensional subspaces for two dimensional subspaces definition and how to figure out compactness for subsets of rn uh -huh. and an example why we care about compactness and also we discussed that compactness is preserved under continuous maps. And let's come back to my original question right now. You have this, you have R2 right now, and D2. What do you know about D2? Can you tell me? Is If you say that there is, exists a map, homeomorphism, let's say G, from R2 to D, sorry, for, from D to R2, let's say. I want to answer the question, is x homeomorphic to z? If yes, why? If no, why? If two spaces are homeomorphic, if one of them compact, the other one is also must be compact. Yeah. So right, what right now we do, and we're going to talk more about this, you have topological spaces, and you want to go and be able 
to tell if they're homomorphic or not. So far, what we use, we used two invariants, kind of. Uh, the first invariant is dimension, and the second invariant is uh, kind of property, is compactness for the space. 